Welcome back to yet another video. Thank you for tuning in. This is going to be kind of a big one. This is going to be all of the gear I use to shoot my feature documentary film. I started thinking about myself and my body in the space I'm in, in this room, and what that would look like as a painting. Sometimes I have to remind myself that I'm good at art, that yes, I am a professionally trained artist. The film is currently in post-production for sound. Um, I sent it off to my sound engineer who's currently mixing and mastering it. So that's exciting. The cut is done, the color grade is done. I'm really excited to be at the stage and to be moving forward. But yeah, as we go, I will keep you updated. And yeah, let's, uh, let's just get into it. I have a list of all the gear on my handy little iPad. To start it off, the iPad. I used this a lot on the documentary, um, especially for the interview scenes. I wrote all my questions on the iPad. It was just really helpful to kind of do some of the pre-production stuff that you can do for a documentary, which is very important and I wish I would have done more. You know, like I said, use it for interviews. It was great, loved it. Um, I also used the Apple Pencil with it and this torch grip. I have another video about my top three iPad supplemental items, I guess, and those two are both in it. Um, if you want to check that out, that will be up here, I believe, on this side. Moving on, we will get into camera. So the camera that I used is the Fujifilm X-T3. I can't hold it because I'm shooting with it right now. I'll put a picture in my hand right here, make it float up and down with my hand. My future self will love that I did that. It was really handy. I think it's a great camera. It shoots 4K, 1080p, 120. It shoots, has a log profile, so it shoots an F-log. I used that on the documentary. And it shoots 10-bit color at 420, which is better than a lot of other mirrorless cameras. Um, yeah, so I used that with the battery grip. I also used this cage on it. This is a small rig full cage that goes over the battery grip. On the cage, I had this, which is just a top handle from U-Rig. Uh, it's all metal, feels really solid. I like it. I don't really like the ones that have kind of the finger grooves because a lot of times they don't fit my hand right. And then on top of the camera, I had the Andy Cine 5 inch 4K monitor. It's not a very expensive monitor. It's under $200 last time I checked. And you have LUT support, you have histogram, false color, uh, focus peaking, audio monitors. Uh, it's just got, it's got everything you need, you know. It's really jam packed for such a cheap monitor. And it helped a lot, you know, not having to look at a tiny little screen that unfortunately doesn't even fully articulate. All right, lenses. We're gonna move fast here because there, there's a lot of stuff and I don't wanna take a ton of time. Uh, lenses. I used the lens I'm shooting with right now, the 18 to 55 kit lens. If you buy the camera with the kit, um, it's a variable aperture, I think f2.8 to f5.6. So in that sense, it's not super awesome, but the image quality is the best as far as kit lens goes. And the build quality is really, really nice. I love that Fujifilm includes these aperture rings for manual adjustment instead of doing it through the camera. It's a, a great lens. On it, I have the Black Pro Mist one quarter uh, strength filter, which might seem a little heavy. I like the look of it. It's the look I use throughout the whole documentary. Yeah, so that's the first lens and the filter that I used. And then I also used this lens. This is the workhorse that I use for pretty much everything. It is the, I don't know if you can see that or not, the Fujifilm 10 to 24 F4. I like a wide kind of field of view, especially if it's like 
telling the story of a person because I want to show them in their environment, and especially with the documentary and Kendall. Uh, the studio was a big part of that film, so I used a wide-angle lens for a lot of it, and that's the one that I used. Really nice, a little more expensive, but definitely worth the price. This is actually my second one because my first one broke due to a tripod mishap. Very sad day. Uh, but my camera survived, so props to the X-T3. It's still kicking. All right, next lens. These next two were used a lot less frequently. Um, this is the Helios 44-2. It is a old uh, Russian manual focus lens. It's talked about all the time in the film community. Um, as far as vintage lenses go, this is like the starter that everyone gets. Aside from the one you get on the film camera that you buy, because you gotta be doing that too, right? But yeah, this is the Helios. So the final lens that I used is this guy right here, which I did happen to get off of a film camera that I bought. So this really cost me like 15 bucks. Uh, it is the Sears Auto Zoom 80 to 200 F4. And it also has Mac macro shooting. It brings it to about like, I don't know, maybe like two and a half feet. The macro focusing is cool because you can get really close to objects. It's, all of the telephoto was shot with this. All right, microphones. For microphones, I have the one that I'm shooting with right now. So this is the microphone that I used for all the interviews in the dock as well as a little bit for some of the run and gun stuff. It is the Sennheiser ME66. It's no longer in production. I don't think you can buy it unless you buy it secondhand. I love the sound quality of it. Uh, I think it's replaced by the MKE 600, which is like $400, I think. I got this as it was on its like discontinued sale price. So they were just getting rid of all of the units that they had left. But the sound quality is great. The build quality is really good. So on the camera, some of the time I also used a different microphone. And that is this one. As you can see, it is the Deity. And it is the VMic D3 Pro. This is a really cool on camera shotgun microphone. It has a fully adjustable gain knob on the back, which is super helpful for like dialing in your audio levels. Yeah, it comes with a nice shock mount, easy to use, gives really good quality. So I realized this after I stopped filming. I used the Zoom H8. It is the audio recorder that I use for all of my videos on here, and I also used it for the film. You don't need one this expensive. You could get one that's more expensive. Yeah, this is the one that I used. All right, we are on to grip equipment now. Very important stuff, worth investing in. So the first thing is the tripod. The one I used was the Liebeck H22DV head on the T68 legs. Um, super reliable. I didn't have a super heavy camera package on top of it, so it did a really nice job. Really fluid and easy to use. Um, I really like the auto balancing feature that it has, so it'll auto balance with your camera to a certain extent with the weight. And really easy to adjust. Overall, really enjoyed using it. I finally have another thing to show on camera. This guy is the stand that I use for pretty much the entire film. It is the impact heavy duty air cushion stand. I'm sure if you search that on Amazon, it'll pop up. It's really nice. It's really heavy duty. Um, it can take a beating. The air cushioning is really nice. It spreads out really wide, so you can put a lot of weight on it. 
and the mount is removable and you can put it in sideways like that. And then it also has a 3 8 and a quarter 20 on it. So it's, you know, you can adjust it to whatever you need. Yeah, it was really, really helpful and good light stands, I think are 100% worth it because you can use them for lights. I've used them to boom microphones. You can use them to hold monitors. You know, you can do a ton. You can use them to hold a five-in-one reflector. You know, they're really versatile and they don't cost that much money. I think I got two for $80. I think that's a great deal for something that I'll be using for, you know, the rest of my career. I guess the other grip stuff that I use is kind of just miscellaneous items like clamps. I used a lot of these. These are just like $3 spring clamps from Lowe's. You can go there and get them right now. I got a couple the other day. Super handy for holding stuff, you know, like a 500 reflector to a stand. I don't know, just like it comes up. These are super handy, really easy to use. You do need a bit of hand strength though, so. For the camera bag, I used this. This is a petrol kind of doctor bag style, duffel bag style camera bag. Um, it's got some stuff in it. Super nice. I really like the high-vis orange interior. It makes it super easy to find gear because a lot of camera gear is just all black, so you can really kind of see it on the inside. Things don't get lost into like a void. It's really rugged, you know, it's got like nice foam inserts that you can move around. Uh, has plenty of storage space. I've been using it for like three years now. And before that, it was used for many years. I got it secondhand and it's still doing really well. So I can definitely recommend it if you find one. I'm not sure if they still make it, but I really like this style of bag, like the doctor bag style. You can, you know, Porta Brace has bags like that. I think doctor bags might might actually be like a brand. Um, I don't know, that style of bag, really nice, worked really well. I could fit pretty much everything aside from like the stands and the lights in the bag. So speaking of lights, the lights that I used pretty much Two, one light, one modifier. Well, two modifiers. I held up the number three. Two modifiers. Uh, the light that I used for pretty much everything was the Godox SL60W, which is a small 60 watt LED light. It's what's lighting me right now on this side. On this side, I have some quasars lighting me. Maybe I'll do a video on that some other time. Um, but yeah, the Godox SL60W, super cheap, and you can get it on sale for like 100 bucks. Otherwise, it's like 120, 130. Really, really nice light quality. It is a little noisier. It has a little fan noise to it, but it wasn't an issue for me. As long as you kind of place the microphone away from the back of the light, you shouldn't run into any issues. The second thing is a five in one reflector. Where is my five in one? So, this is the five in one reflector that I used. It is a newer one. Um, I know, Amazon brand, crazy, right? Um, I got it a few years ago and it still works, so I still use it. Yeah, super helpful. It really, having that kind of bounce just off of a key light bouncing and just a little fill gives a super, super nice look to an image. It also has a, like a silk in the middle of it so I can use that as extra diffusion or it has a negative fill. So if I want a little more contrast, I can use that. Did that a couple times. Um, overall, super, super handy, uh, can just, accentuate your lighting just that little bit more that can kind of give it that extra extra little bit so those are 
kind of the lighting things that I used. On the Godox, I have a 30 inch softbox. Uh, so not a huge one, uh, but it does the job. Okay, so it looks like that's pretty much all of the gear. I'm sure there's like some miscellaneous things, like some batteries, maybe uh, cables, tripod plates, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, that is what I used. And then as far as editing goes, I use DaVinci Resolve Studio. I've used it for a few years now. I swear by it. I think it's better than everything else out there. You buy it once, you have it for life. The color grading software in it is by far better than any other one I've used. I've used Premiere, I've used Final Cut. It's just, I don't know, I love it. And I will forever preach uh, DaVinci Resolve as the best one. Um, for sound editing, I have a friend, Jacob, who does all of my sound engineering um, because he is an audio wizard and I think he uses Pro Tools. So that's what's gonna be doing all the, the final sound editing. Yeah, I think that is everything. All in all, as far as shooting a feature film goes, this is really, really inexpensive equipment. I know that it can be expensive to you know, buy all this stuff right away, especially if you're just starting, shooting your first, you know, short, your first commercial stuff. Um, this is stuff that I built up over a few years and I will continue to build things up over the next, you know, however long I create for. So it's always a process of, you know, accumulating um, the gear that you need when you need it. That is what I used to shoot a feature documentary film. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if it felt a little rushed and crazy. Um, I didn't want it to be too long of a video because I know you're busy, I'm busy. We all got stuff to do. But with that said, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to see more. I will be posting more, reg more regularly. This is not correct. I will be posting more uh, this year in 2022. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.